man. Oh. As I just lost to that. The what? Uh, Is it my groaning? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Um, no. Who? <laughs> blue white? Yeah, the uh, blue white control. Uh, Lots of people are playing it tonight. Yeah, Zoria's Charm. Kept bouncing cards to his hand, just couldn't handle it. Card advantage. Yeah, he couldn't pull an unrolled connection stuff. Keep up with it. So we got a stomping ground into an elvish mystic. <laughs> I gotta give uh, Nick a considerable amount of props. That's a real man stomping ground. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then Jonathan's playing Ice Age Only Basics, which I also enjoy. But that is one of my least favorite islands ever printed. Oh, is this one lander? No. Uh, Scrylander. Can we, can we call him the Scrylander? People are gonna have nicknames online. No. <laughs> um, so Jonathan representing Dissolve here. Nick is Nick is on the Manador beatdown plan, which yes. is just how he Take two. just how he drew it up. And about the scavenging news. So this the, the scavenging news here is fine. Like, I don't even think you resolve it if you have it. There's the scavenging news is after you Supreme Verdict that are really scary. They come down and immediately go up to like uh, six, six power. Six. Yeah. So Jonathan playing his uh, fourth land tapped here. So he either doesn't have a verdict or doesn't feel like this is a verdictable. To be, to be perfectly honest, he really only nets two damage, or... Well, he cut the ramp, but if you're representing Dissolve, like, you want him to play a Planeswalker into that. Yeah, that's a good point. But, I mean, like, he can shock him... He can take the damage as is as before, or he can shock himself and effectively take two. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it's basically the same thing. Kind of bait it's Nick into potentially overplaying into that board. Well, if Nick doesn't have a Zinni Ghost to follow it up, he just has a Sylvan Carry to... Is he borrowing your Domries? Yes. Here comes a Garrick. Oh no, uh, Arbor, Arbor Colossus. He has a Garrick in his hand. Hmm. Arbor Colossus is the player, like I was talking to you about it earlier tonight. The Green Knights just don't have a good 5 drop. At all. They have to splash a card to get something like Storm Breath Dragon. Even then, is it worth it? Is it worth it at that point? Hey-o! I mean, 5 mana 6-6 six, six reach with Monstrosity isn't, isn't the worst card in the world. The, the, like, like, this is like the perfect situation for Jonathan, because Nick's deck is a play one big thing every turn if it doesn't have access to Xenagos and Domri and Garrick. Right. And so if you're just drawing the big creature half of your deck, like, it, it's irrelevant. Like, there's literally nothing that Jonathan can't, can't deal with. Right. Like, the worst, the best thing I guess, Jonathan, the turn two Domri. Just start ticking it up, because then he's turn on it. Turn two Garrick is also pretty bad. If you go, turn two Garrick? Yeah. Is that Land possible? Mystic, uh, Nykthos. Turn two Emissary, Emissary, Emissary. I think Nykthos is oh, six. This seems like a very kind of... I've seen it happen at a Grand Prix. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's pretty <laughs> good. <laughs> Burning tree Emissary. Definitely a card they should have printed. Yes. <laughs> Free, free spells are... Especially with Nyctos. I mean, free spells have never, like, turned out to be a bad choice in the past, right? To be fair, it's prohibitive. The fact that you can play two different colors of mana for it. So we've got a big Nyctos activation here, right? We can net one, we can go up to six mana, we can play the Garrick in his hand. Mm -hmm. I guess you're baiting out of Zoria's Charm here. Nick not going to... Uh, or uh, Jonathan not going to fall for it, assuming he has it. And then we're going to load up a... Uh, oh no, we're just Monster Singer Dude here. Interesting. This one's fine. No, it seems much better than playing the Garrick. Monster actually on its three, right? Yeah. So you guys have a five? Mm-hmm. But what I like about this is you force Jonathan to have... to answer the Arbor Colossus before you can you play anything else out. Mm -hmm. So next turn you just swing it with the Colossus, or he either answers it now with a Verdict. Yes. He was at 14, right? Huh? He was at 14, right? Uh, I don't know. Uh, hold, no. hold on. Yeah, he was at 14. Right. He takes yeah, 9, right? Yeah. He was at 14. Okay. He was at 5. Yeah, he was at 14. Had to have been at 14. I had to go to... Thank God we, <laughs> thank, thank God we have the delay. Insta replay. Insta replay says totes 14. <laughs> <laughs> you even looked at us. It's a 6-6. Six, six. It goes up to 9-9 nine, nine on Monstrosity. D-Sphere here on the Colossus. 
I'm going to try to see what Jonathan has in his hand. Is Jonathan playing around Nick having planeswalkers, but the spot where Nick could have plopped one onto the board, he didn't. So any, any non geared cards. But now you force Jonathan to have. But now you force Jonathan to have a counterspell here, mm -hmm. which he does because he always does. <laughs> so there's two of the oh, and he has, down. he has an he has an Elspeth and another Deesir in his hand. That's it. That's so to be at. so Elspeth makes an appearance here, right? If we yeah, you're not afraid of anything. Oh, uh, well, he might wait for one more turn and, and leave dissolve up. He's got a rev. But don't you just slam Elspeth yeah, here? Yeah, slam Elspeth here. Even if he has a storm breath dragon, you get one. Plus, like, uh, Jonathan plays some number of syncopates. He chooses not to, but... Revenue is fine. Yeah. That way, next but turn, you can... Uh, you can Elspeth, Elspeth with... Yeah. There's a reason why Jonathan... So, Jonathan popped forward the West Virginia PTQ, and then last weekend got ninth at the Kentucky PTQ. And his brother got f top four. I didn't know about that. Yeah. Jonathan only got top... He only got ninth instead of eighth because the guy he in unintentionally drew with, Michael Belfato, in the last round, somehow jumped him in breakers. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Sweet. Which means, well, the only way that that happens is when I have Belfato's opponents won and... Yeah, it's just completely random. It went to, like, the third tiebreaker. But uh, well, the point there being is, like, uh, the Wright brothers know what the they're doing with the blue-white. <laughs> they know how to pilot a blue-white deck. Play Jonathan basically top eighting back to back PTQs. I've won FNM, right? I played FNM once. Too good. I played it for two weeks. A total of nine matches. I'm calling myself an expert. I was the highest placing non casher at the Legacy Open. <laughs> That's not even true. It was 66. <laughs> Second place even amongst them. So what was the, what was the token we made there? He's gonna go satyr. He doesn't have satyrs. Right, does. There's another Zinagos. Thinking awfully hard about this one. It's not gonna beat an Elspeth. Jacob Swords in the chat saying that was because no one showed up barely to the Kentucky PTQ. Lol. Uh, there was like 130 people there. Like, there's been. <laughs> like if 130 people at your PTQ is a, an embarrassingly low count, then almost every PTQ has an embarrassingly low count. Average at 99. There's what is that there less than? I'm, if, if you think it's easy to top four or top eight 130 person uh, tournament in eight. which both Graves brothers are there, Shrouds there, uh, Trey yeah. Trey Shrouds there and Trey, he lives there. Trey so, Van Cleve like is there. All game. the Silver Creek grinders are there. Like Belfado's there. All of your Southern Ohio guys are there. It's no big deal, right? <laughs> this is a cakewalk. There's only 130 people there. Right. You know how hard it is to win FNM every week? Yes. <laughs> and there's only 20 people, <laughs> and try. half of them are it's, bad. It's my struggle. <laughs> so here's all these posters made that I brought in. Uh, Jonathan Jones, 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 Jonathan We've just reached the portion of the game where Nick just shows him all the planeswalkers he has and, and begs for them to resolve. Awesome. That one sticks. Well, Jonathan probably has about two to three. Oh my gosh. Well, here's the uncounterable Rurikthar. Jeez. Yep. You just put it into play. Yep, you don't get to respond. To, you get to respond to the trigger, but... Yeah, you can respond to it with a Vendillion play. Yeah, I'd like to see Jonathan play that. But, I mean, he has to, Smack like... If he wants to respond to it, he has to cast it when he says, activate Garrick. You can't, yes. once you see Rook Thar, it's too it's late. Exactly. So Jonathan's dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he can play Aether here. And trade with the Rook Thar. You can chop it one turn with you well. Well, no, he can chump the satyr, he can trade with the satyr token, and then, um, hope to find his aether link. I'm still kind of salty about this, uh, <laughs> just, like, Have you never been trolled by the chat? Comment before? in passing. Well, that's not me, that's the, the rights. Right. I don't know. I just know that, I know who was in the top eight of that tournament. And it was better than most Star City top eights, because they all came to Indianapolis the next day and all made the top eight again. 
Also, like, the Wright brothers have top eight in a lot of 100 player plus tournaments. I don't know. Scotty picked up my Jun deck at the Legacy Open for the first so time ever and went 4 1. Yeah. And then the wheels came off and he left, but. Backtracking <laughs> in the chat. <laughs> Are we still playing? Like, don't we just lose to well, Urkthar? Yeah, but as soon as he casts it, trigger. But he can respond to the character. Because Nick, Nick fast like that. Like, oh, are you saying like he just put it into play without asking? Yeah. Alright. I think it sticks, though. I don't think it matters. Like, I don't think Nick was trying to scum him or anything. I think Jonathan has a Sphinx of Revelation, had an opportunity to cast it, and now it doesn't because... I mean, if, if he said it resolved, then that's one thing, but if he's asking about the card, then that's another thing. Obviously what happened there was Jonathan said it resolved, because I heard JB talking, saying, you know, the Rare Thurs on the battlefield. Yeah, I think Jonathan said, yeah, that's fine, and then later realized, wait, I shouldn't have said it that way. Because I'm a fool to put in a Rurk Thar. Yes. Yeah, I think he just forgot about Rurk Thar. Rurk Thar is the uh, Nick Green and Alec Meyer special. It's just, it's just a one-of. Yes. It's very good. It's, it's fine. It's very good in, in our room, too. Yeah, like, some of the red-green decks run like a Seven Primordial. Some of the red-green decks run a Rurk Thar, too. Because if you ever get the Garrick Ultimate, the, you want one bullet to where you can cast like an Elvish Mystic and get a Seven Primordial. Or whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I saw Storm for a daily event on it. I'm giving this this poor Jacob Swords guy just like he he made one mostly innocuous statement on a night where I'm just unwilling to let it go. <laughs> So Jonathan wins game one, uh, or Jonathan loses game one off the back of uh, Nick chaining together several turns of Planeswalkers that overwhelmed the counter magic that Jonathan had left at that point. And a Rurik Thar off a Garrick is enough. Let's see if that same scenario shows up in game two, where the Jonathan will so kind of flippantly respond okay to the. Uh, <laughs> The gag. Yeah, sure. Because there's any other creature. Uh, yeah, okay. in any other creature is, is basically irrelevant. Because you, you want to put in a scavenger? You untap a <laughs> Elvish Mystic. Four mana. Four? Pelucranus. No, Pelucranus. The ugly one. Needs to dissolve by John. Jonathan with perfect mana plus mutable. It's one of the one of the key steps in like this blue white deck sucks. Honestly, it sucks, but it's the best Finkers Revelation deck, and this card is still the most powerful card I've seen. This deck is just praying to cast a turn four spring verdict and then get to Finkers Revelation. So it does like in, little innocuous stuff. Like overcoming challenges such as having blue lands and white lands to catch your blue and white spells. <laughs> if you can get to that point, you're probably in a good position. There is a Zonagaris going straight to the graveyard. Is that on the gate? Yeah, I mean the the Wright brother. I don't know about the I don't know about the standard. I don't know exactly what the stock blue white list is amongst net decks today, but. The sideboard that the Rice use, there's two Negates and two Pithic Needles. Those come in for sure. Uh, Ratchet Bomb that they may bring in, just as another answer to. Yeah. So their, their deck gets incredibly better in the sideboarded games uh, in this specific matchup. Because the creatures really don't matter anyway. It's just the, just the Planeswalkers, really, that... The, the creatures only matter in the sense that when you eventually draw them after they've ex expended all the resources on the Planeswalkers, they stick and drive it home. Like I said, the red-green deck wants to commit one big threat to the board, and whenever it, it's one big threat for this turn, 
Let's say a Domri. Next turn it's going to play another big threat. That big threat sticks, it has Domri activation plus that big threat. And it just creates this big snowballing monster. That's hard for uh, control decks and other decks in the format to overcome. Still at the ends of the six round. There's no way to get around it. There's no way to get around it. Even if you have two revs. No matter what, that rare effect triggers always. Yeah, the trigger's always, trigger's always gonna resolve first. Mm. So Jonathan doesn't have a D sphere here and just results resorts to the mutable beatdown plan to try and get rid of Domri. Scavenging is revealed off the top. Burning tree. Burning tree five, six. There's a Garrick. And that one's going to stick too. So Jonathan, like, really up against it here. Because here's the part of the game where Rurikthar, Rurikthar, Pelucranos. The green deck starts drawing more cards than the blue white deck does. Yep. Nick plays a Sphinx is revved, and it's a green planeswalker named Garrick. Lead the Stampede's a heck of a magic card. Well, there's D Sphere. Nick correctly waiting for the trigger to target, <laughs> but it was obvious because he would, uh, Jonathan would just straight lose to that Rurikthar activation again. Instead of Simic charmed in response, given all those primary sex <laughs> All right, so the D Sphere connects. We know Nick has two copies of Rurikthar, so just you just play it. Yeah, you just fire it out there, don't you? <laughs> but you don't play the second one. You don't Justin Carpenter him. Did Justin Carpenter... He was on stream. And, and play well, too? No one caught it. Where was I? You were here. We, we, after a turn we were like, yeah, he has two work. Like, no, I think we might have caught it instantaneously. But regardless, like his first experience with Rorkthar was to, uh, to cast his second one in his hand as quickly as he could. Mm-hmm. So there, uh, Jonathan able to clean up the board with the Supreme Verdict. Jonathan having uh, got up to 23 life, so uh, the six points of damage from the Rook Thar trigger, not nearly as devastating. Could not see what he revealed there. So there's a burning tree into a burning tree <laughs> into destructive revelry on your D sphere. Put this into play from my hand. How you like me now? So uh, it's pretty good. There's a verdict. So Jonathan took... <laughs> Jonathan's taken 15 damage over the course of three cards from Nick. Yeah, Jonathan's at nine. He was at 24 two turns ago, and yes. because of two Urkthars, he's at nine. And still facing down a Domri. We know there's a Pelucranos in, in um, Nick's hand as well. So there's an ooze. Sphinx's Rev. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So Jonathan, doing what Jonathan does best, which is to draw a card off the top of his deck into an empty hand and make sure it's Sphinx's Revelation. What a jerk. <laughs> Best card in the format. Uh, I, I, I disagree. I functionally disagree. I think he has the best card in Magic in play on his side of the board, but I don't think it's Sphinx's Revelation. Yeah. Mutavolt's just so darn good in so many decks. I think it's it's one of, it's arguing uh, it's splitting hairs about the most like what are the what are the best cards of standard like Thoughtseize, Mutavolt, Sphinx's Revelation, and then the drop off is like drastic from there. Well, I'd say Nicholas is up there. Yes, that's fine. Talarian Academy also pretty good, you know. So, but I mean those four cards are so far and away like better than they. Yeah. It's being played in the same deck as Coffin Raptor. Coffin Raptor. So we talked about that earlier today. Where you just gotta play the. <laughs> it's like that just tells you how good, uh, like Thassa and Master of Waves are. That you voluntarily put Coffin Raptor and Tie Binder Mage in your deck. Yes. And leave them in that sideboard. <laughs> yeah. In that game against you. Rick played like the turn 20 cloud fin raptor is like the most embarrassing thing I said, ever. I said it was awesome. <laughs> it's the most embarrassing thing. So that Domri finally kicked the bucket. Yep. 
Disperse. Oh, what a blowout. So the Wright brothers play one disperse. It's a good card. There's a there's a Domre meet with met with a negate. So Jonathan's gonna get there. There's the ooze. I think with one mana, I'm not such a bad thing. Yeah. Nick uh, looks like he has two cards in his hand. I got to kill a Domre with my disperse oh, earlier. <laughs> kill it? Yeah. Yeah. Bounce my detention sphere. Mm -hmm. Put your Domre back into play. Play my detention sphere. Get your Domre. Mm. Well, there was a good, there was a play uh, last standard that Streggy made one time where, like, his opponent played a Jace and he O-ringed it, and his opponent played another Jace, and so Streggy O-ringed his O-ring mm -hmm. to just kill him. And like, it's it's obvious when you when you think about it. Right. But at the time, I was like, so he's just going to O-ring the other Jace, and, and Streggy's like, no. <laughs> That's literally the only reason I wanted to put the source in my deck was to mount it and kill multiple copies of Planeswalkers that were on the battlefield. It has other uses too. Oh, wait a minute, hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's all I wanted to do, and I accomplished it. Tonight was a successful night. What is Faded Retribution? Is that the make the. That is destroy all creatures and planeswalkers at instant speed if it's your turn, Scry 2. Oh, the new, the new one? Hey, oh, Sphinx's Rev. What about that card that's like uh, make, make a bunch of centaurs at instant speed? Is that card any good in this deck? No, it doesn't add to devotion. But it adds to centaur count. <laughs> Five mana for six power is, uh, it's not that impressive. It has no synergy with the deck. I just got done telling you how bad Harbor Colossus is. Man, can we move on? Can Alec or can Alec? Well, it might as well basically, be Alec. Basically, Alec. <laughs> can Alec number two, Nick Reed, <laughs> win this game from this point? They have the same deck. They show up in the same card. <laughs> yes, they play basically the same commander deck too. Nick those four mana. Blukernos. One, it has four Nykthos activation for four. So you could, you can't quite kill his team. You can kill a soldier. He's telegraphing as uh, St. Famous in right now. Chumps. I got chumps for days. So I scavenging is a three for you there. Four, four. Uh-oh. Hey, now. For uh, Elspeth minus three. Yeah, the oft underseen Elspeth minus three. I got to Elspeth minus three to kill a uh, Boros Shrekner earlier, because my opponent had a Spear of Beauty on play. And I think Jonathan is see sees that line there, because uh, you also don't want to give Nick activation, uh, like, you don't want to leave Pelucranos around. Right. Uh, what just happened there? Oh, he uh, he killed the tokens in response. You start serving him with mutavolts. Never. Elixir. Mutavolts are for killing planeswalkers and defensive purposes only. <laughs> they never attack your life total. Here's another rev. Yes. Um. <laughs> <coughs> There's also like a spot where like you could consider. Oh, God bless Nick. <laughs> Nick is the kind of guy who knows when he's lost and doesn't feel the need. Alec is not. That's where they not. differ. That's I where. Six revelations. I've had <laughs> in round in four, game. unfortunately for Garrett, uh, Alec did beat him in the win and in. But uh, in game one, Garrett cast six Sphinx's revelations in the course of the game. I drew about a an extra forty <laughs> cards. Would you? Whenever they were. In well, well, that's the famous thing about uh, Future Future League is this th this was a process that completely missed the fact that you could fetch Valakut with Primeval Titan. Right. And Batter Skull is so <laughs> full of Mystic. See, this is the game. Like, as far as I'm concerned, this is the game. Turn to Domri. He doesn't have a turn three detention sphere. Revealing, uh... Burning Tree Emissary. Okay, well he can go Burning Tree Emissaries and Xena Ghost next turn. That'd be the dream start. Mm. 
Scry. So no Nick Thess shenanigans. You can fight the Elvish mystic with Jonathan's face. <laughs> but there's that there's that subtle interaction there. You saw he uh, set it up at the top of his deck pre Domri with the temple. He shoved it. He missed on the shove as well. But still, you know. <sighs> traveling Seder chained off an emissary. What did I say? Traveling Seder. Yes. Well, I only do it every time. So Is it a brain tree Seder. shaman? Earlier somebody got on me because I kept saying Fire Fist Seder <laughs> instead of Fire Drinker Seder. Or Fire Fist Drinker. But that person obviously had never watched before because if they had watched before they would know that I'm horrible at what I do. Revealing a Sylvan Primordial, which is obviously a sideboarded card, which this deck doesn't really struggle to ever have the mana to cast and can put into play off of uh, yeah, if he Garrick. Had, if he had a... Uh... An untap land this turn, he could have played it this turn, right? Or if he had a one, two, this three, turn. four, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, if he had a Nyx for sure, he could have. What was that card? Carrioted? Yeah. That is a Sylvan Carrioted. That card is, uh, Very disappointing replacement for random growth effects. I would take Explore. Like, I think Explore is the most fair uh, random growth effect because you don't get the 2D. But I would take Explore. I want something that was not able to play for my uh, pain very well. Here. So Domri up to 7, to 7 ultimate, isn't it? 7 is the ultimate, what was that? It was like work, oh, okay. Revealed off the <laughs> Domri. So you just play that this turn. And then making Supreme Verdict, and then next turn you have uh, ultimate. Plus whatever creature you're left in your hand. Well, I mean, you can play the uh, Sylvan Primordial as well, too. And if that resolves, you can take out the Mutavolt. You can then take out the White Source. He only yeah, has one White Source. True. Verdict cost two. I'm trying to. I'm living in this world where I'm scared about him verdicting and then activating that Mutavolt. But that's first of all. First of all, it's something that can't happen with the current mana states. In fact, we're two full turns off of that being able to happen. So we're just gonna serve in with the team here. The, the dorks. Leaving the uh, Seder up, interestingly enough. Just play a Pelucranos. Yeah, that's fine. Like, that makes Jonathan's turn. Next turn, verdict when he dies. But he's just dead. Like, unless he kills this Domery this turn, or has a he can He cannot beat that emblem. Like, I don't... Like, the game has to be so he has, prolonged. He has to have one or two spells. Um, yes, D-Sphere? D-Sphere for the Domri. Um, the, the Disperse will be fine. Sure. Um, or a counter spell for the Rurik Guard. Because the Rurik Guard is going to swing for six. Uh, double strike next turn. And you can't get it off the board. Even if you could, you take six, Like pass Hexproof. Like, I don't know if I've ever... We've watched Domri get ultimate a lot on the stream over the I've last few months. I've seen after someone cast, like, four swings relations. Yeah, like, you have... Yeah. There's a divination. What are you even looking for? Your uh, land and your disperse. I don't know if we found it. So there's a mutable. There's a syncopate. Can't can't make out any other cards. And so that's it. The emblem is going to hit. Could not do it quick enough. <laughs> Whoops. So, vigil all your creatures have haste. Double strike, hex proof, trample. Pretty good. So here comes the scam of the uh, the green thing from Commander <laughs> Sylvan Primordial. Sylvan Primordial targets your Temple of Silence. It's going to get syncopated. Oh, that's a huge mistake. He's just. Dead this turn, regardless. Like they have oh, because it's not. Apple. It's because it can't be countered. Right. That's the <laughs> part that I ignored, and that is the ball game. So one That's quarter final game, down. Right? 
Nick moves to uh, the semis. And now everybody else is racing against the clock for the pre-release times. Yep, one blue-white player down, so uh, we might be able to <laughs> finish finish before the uh, pre-release starts. Red-green decks taking on blue-white. I am going to need.